Hello, hello again from Los Angeles. Welcome back to another video. I hope you've enjoyed the last few. If you haven't seen them, the links are going to be around. But today started off as a bit of a sad day because Paul has left to go back to the UK. So temporarily, I am now here alone for a little bit. And then Cole, who you guys know very well, Drive with Cole, is going to be coming over to join me. But the day was very, very, very quickly made much better by Roadster, an app I've worked with before. The links are going to be down below. And there are some really, really cool things on that app. You guys should really check it out. But they have supplied me with this car for the next two days, a Porsche Boxster Spider. You guys probably know this car really well. So I'm going to do a bit of a review today of this. We're up near Mulholland Drive, which is an amazing road in Los Angeles. And I'm going to tell you about this car. And also, I'm interested in this car. And I've been interested in it for a long time because it's around the same sort of performance and price bracket as my old Lotus and somewhat of the Alpine as well. So before I get into too 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 much talking, <laughs> why don't we run you through a few stats. I'm going to spin the camera around for you now. Here's the car, you can see it's branded up with the Roadster app sticker, but it is a beautiful spec on this one. So we've got the white paint on black rims and red calipers. Now the brakes are relevant, we'll talk about those in a little bit. And we've also got the Porsche decals on the side. Now this is effectively, for those of you who know it, a Porsche Cayman GT4 that you can take the roof off. So I don't know what more you can ask for because they are brilliant, the Porsche Cayman GT4s. I've driven a few of those, but I've never driven a Boxster Spider. So I'm very excited for this experience. It has a few differences over the GT4. So this has 375 horsepower, so 10 less than the GT4. And it also features slightly different front suspension and slightly different brakes. But apart from that, it still has the same flat six and it still is based on the same chassis and the engine is in the same place and all that jazz. Obviously this is based on the Boxer, which means you can take the roof off and I'll show you how you do that in a bit because it is different to the usual Porsche Boxers where it's a fully electric roof. This is a bit electric, but mostly manual. I think they look great, especially like this little rear lip spoiler right there and these two humps, this sort of double bubble look on the rear. Looks really nice and arcs back to the old Speedster Porsches. This is quite a rare car, so they're doing quite well. They're, they've been appreciating and they're hard to get your hands on. So it's uh, not 60 in just over four seconds. And they're about, I think base price was $83,000 here. But once you've specced it, it's $95,000, something like that. So around the same money as a Lotus Exige a 380 or something along those lines. But inside, this is beautiful, uh, much more luxurious than a Lotus. You can see this also has the painted details inside in the white as well to go with the outside. And then lots of Alcantara and red stitching to go with the brake calipers. The, the theme is lightness as well, mostly around the car. So they made it quite a bit lighter by doing things like removing door handles, so you just got a little strap. And it also features this, a six-speed manual, which is what makes the car, in my opinion. Uh, on the inside, this one has the comfort seats. You can get them with the 918 style bucket seats, but these are far more comfortable. So if you're using it a lot, as the owner of this one does, it makes much more sense to have this. So I'm just gonna hop inside show you a few more details before I take it for a little drive. You can see you've got your typical Porsche um, sort of counter here, your dashboard, um, but compared to 911s where you'll have five circles, this only has the three. So in the middle, you've got your rev counter, then you've got your speedometer, and then this is actually a little screen and you can flick through loads of different things there. Um, it also features a Bose sound system, and it's very usable every day actually for such a sort of almost track focused car. It has your classic, cup holders here, like in the 911. I'm very sort of familiar interior because a lot of Porsches that were coming around around this era, this was released in 2016, all have the same interior. So you've got this famous sort of sweeping um, the platform in the middle with all of your buttons. So you can see Sport, Sport Plus, which tightens everything up and makes your throttle response a bit more 
sort of direct um, suspension gets a little harder and it also opens up the exhaust which you can actually do manually from there and then you can also raise and lower the little lip spoiler back there um, this is for the roof so I've never really seen a video on how to take the roof off and I just had it explained to me so we're going to do that right now I'm going to put the key in the ignition classic Porsche key as you can tell sort of in the shape of a 911 so it's on the left compared to any other cars which is always takes a bit of getting used to kill the radio so first step for the roof you pull this roof removal button and an electric engine undoes this and unclips the roof in the front so I'm gonna press that now and you'll see boom there we go just comes unclipped windows go down now for the next step you actually have to get out of the car and you have to take these little clips off. Oh, I just got electrocuted. Um, there's a little button somewhere in here. Hopefully, I'll find it easily. Um, that you press, and then oh god, I've tried, I've done this a few times. Not there we go. There's the button. So you take that out, and then you have to clip it into here. So that happens pretty easily usually. If I do it in the right direction, that would help. There we go. We got the arrow on the arrow. And then normally that should just boom go in there we go so that clips up there you go around to the other side and you do the same thing again so find the little button boom that actually went fairly smoothly that time and then clip it in here it's a bit tricky to do this with one hand as you can maybe tell so that gets clipped in now when I press the electric bit on the inside the boot back here actually opens so you just pull that up so it all comes up in one piece and actually reveals a boot in the back. The engine is under there, but you have another frunk uh, in the front as well. So once that's all done, all you then do is you pull the roof back. So ooh, with one hand, there we go. Try and do that nice and gently. Roof comes down like that and you're pretty much good to go. All you have to do now is put this back down nice and gently. It's quite a big big old piece that you have to lift down put these little flaps down boom and on the other and you're good to go it shows these nice painted sort of roll um, bars in the back there and a wind deflector but I think it looks great with the roof off I mean look at that and it adds so much more drama to the experience I can imagine over the GT4. So now that you know all the stats on this car and you've seen it, you've seen all the details, I think it's about time we hop in and actually see what this is like. I'm going to be using this uh, for a nice canyon drive with some other cars and a car event tomorrow. So that video will be coming too. I thought I would just sort of get in this because I've been so curious about this car for a long time, having been shopping the same sort of market. And this is the kind of car I love. Manual, lightweight, sounds great, and sort of no bullshit, straight to the point, enjoyable driver's car. So this is my cup of tea and I can't wait to give it a go so let's hop in so this is Stephen next to me right here the owner of this beautiful beautiful car who's kindly lent it to me so thank you so much no we have the roof off but the windows up so hopefully you'll be able to hear us enough but uh, yeah I'm excited for this what is the boxer spider like to drive I think you can hear that with the roof off it absolutely changes the car that's the first is gorgeous and it does these incredible pops and it's such like a classic Porsche noise oh, I absolutely love it now having driven the GT4 I know how good this car is and you guys have probably already seen a bunch of reviews on the GT4 it is a fantastic driver's car this gearbox is amazing very short throw gearbox with the rev matching as well so you can maybe hear if I go up into third accelerate now so I change down you hear that I've, I haven't done any of that all I did was change down and the car matches the revs and oh, those crackles first of all it sound, makes you sound like a hero but it's also just brilliant for driving and makes the experience so much more enjoyable really really like this gearbox and it's so great that they had the balls to put a manual into this car oh, it pops on the upshifts as well now the main thing that strikes you as soon as you get into this car 
is how beautiful the steering is, how direct it is, and how little body roll there is as well. We're just going around some of these corners and the car is so flat. And this one, compared to the GT4, as I mentioned, doesn't have the front suspension of the GT3. But you can really feel that it's, it's hunkered down and it's so low as well. Such good aero and that mixed with the good steering, the fantastic gearbox, it just makes it oh, for such a good experience. And it's quick, 375 horsepower. They'll get you wherever you want to go in time, that's for sure. The throttle response in Sport Plus as we are now, it's fantastic. And the brakes, these are the sport brakes on this one. Feel really nice, they don't feel overly powerful, but they've got a nice feel to them so you can hop in and they don't take too much adjusting time like often you find in some of these cars. Now how does it compare to my old Lotus? This has basically got exactly the same power. Now you can feel that it is quite a bit heavier because there's some pretty nasty potholes around here. So if you see me concentrating on the road a bit, it's because we've got some big potholes. But you can definitely feel that this car is heavier. Now it's not as direct as the Lotus was. And it doesn't feel as light in terms of when you put your foot down, it doesn't go as instantly. It doesn't break quite as sharply. So I'd say it's, it's a bit less brutal than the Lotus. Now, if you're only doing track, then that probably means the Lotus is maybe slightly better and slightly more visceral on track. But if you're using it for this sort of stuff and you're driving it sort of almost daily, then this is so much better. You don't need to spend half an hour taking the roof off. You can actually use this car and be comfortable in it. And it gives you 95% of what the Lotus will give you. Oh, it is so good. And it is one step up in every way over the LP. There's no denying that. I mean, it is a hardcore sort of version. Porsches don't have character. This thing has buckets of it, I feel. But yeah, compared to the Alpine, it's in a different league. You can't, you can't even compare. And it's making me really, really want one now. Oh man, it's good. I love it. How do you not just come to the canyons every single day? It's hard. Yeah. It's hard not to. I can imagine. Oh, I am gonna be straight on Auto Trader after this. This is so cool. And you know, when you're sat at traffic like this, it's not too loud. It doesn't get too much attention. And it is a usable car. And you have that familiar and quality feel inside, which you don't really have on uh, the Alpine or the Lotus. You know, they're sort of much smaller brands. So they're getting used to, to the stuff. But this, you know, you've actually got like the proper Alcantara and nice leather and a Bose sound system. What a beast. I love this. I like it. I knew I'd like it, but I like it more than I thought I would. How does it compare to the GT4? I mean, maybe driving on track, you can feel a few little differences, but driving it on a road like we are today, I can't feel any difference, to be honest with you. The only thing is that there's so much more drama from the roof being off. So it feels so much faster, louder, and just better than a GT4 on a road like this in California with the roof down. This makes so much more sense, I feel. I mean, why, why wouldn't you do this? saying something because that is one of my favorite cars it is a brilliant driver's car and this is equally so i don't think this got enough credit you know it was sort of always in the shadow of the gt4 because everyone loved that car and geeked out about it so much and they went up in value but there are less of these made a lot less uh, produced and you can take the roof off so it's just a win-win as far as i'm concerned I am seriously 
now thinking that I want to look into seeing if there are any of these for sale in the UK. If you know of any of these for sale, please send me a message because this is fantastic. The next step is because you're very kindly lending us the car for two days, we're going to go pick up Cole in the airport and he actually has no idea that I'm driving this and he loves Porsche. So we're going to get his reaction and then we're going to try and go explore some of LA. So we're thinking we're going to like Venice Beach, USA and those sorts of areas and get some cool videos for you guys. So next stop for us now is the airport. Okay guys, I've just popped up at the airport. Ooh, let me hop out the car. I've put the roof back on because I've parked. There he is. I see him. Hello, how are you? Yeah, you good? I'm you good? Man. You tired? Yeah, I'm knackered. Right, come, come. Welcome to Los Angeles, Thank big you, boy. You. you sound tired. I cannot. Yeah, I'm a bit tired, a bit tired. Are you hungry? I can eat, I can always eat. Okay, you know what you do when you arrive in LA for the first time? I think I have a good idea. You go to In N Out Burger, In -N -Out. that's what you do, so yeah, that's what we're gonna do. That is the ride. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. That is. The best car. Yeah? For LA right now. Right? We can take the roof off, we can oh cruise. Okay. You're gonna live the LA dream. Put that there. And then we have another boot for your bag in the back. Oh, do do yeah, yeah, it's like in the Alpine. Boom. Here we go, you ready? It's so nice. It's so nice. It's amazing. Amazing, right? Right. Straight to in and out. Let's get you some food. Let's do it. Let's do it. Sir, have some food. Yeah. First time. Is this the moment? This is the moment. If you guys don't know, these burgers are quite famous. But when you come to LA, you just, you go to in and out It's just kind of the thing. Have a bite. Right, and on that jolly note, we're gonna end today's video because I think Cole needs to get some sleep. And we'll be back, we've got loads of cool stuff coming up. Tomorrow we're doing a bunch of events. It, it, it's gonna be cool. Thanks for watching, subscribe, like, all that good stuff, and cheers. Bye-bye.